Hello everyone. Today we will be discussing obesity, officially a disease. We would like to note that the creators of this video are not healthcare professionals and that the purpose of the video is just to discuss non-individualized information regarding obesity. Self-diagnosis should not be made based on the information in this video and a healthcare professional should be consulted instead. Obesity is a chronic and sometimes progressive condition that can negatively affect the quality of our physical and mental health and can reduce an individual's lifespan. Obesity is when an individual has an excess or an accumulation of fat cells. As of 2020, the National Institute of Health, Canadian Medical Association, and the World Health Organization recognize obesity as a chronic disease where healthcare providers must assess obesity on a similar level to that of other chronic conditions such as type 2 diabetes. Obesity is typically diagnosed based on the measures of body height and weight that are used to calculate the body mass index or BMI. The BMI helps physicians indicate which weight category people fall under. The use of waist circumference gives an indication of visceral fat which is the fat that accumulates around the organs in the abdomen. It is a critical part of diagnosis because it is the only fat storage location that is directly associated with cardiovascular disease and death. Oftentimes, people associate obesity with being lazy, unhygienic, and unattractive. This adds to weight biases, which promotes eating disorders and depression in obese individuals. These weight biases were exacerbated by previous 2006 guidelines that emphasized the importance of weight reduction and based diagnosis solely on the numerical values of BMI and waist circumference without considering that obesity is multifactorial and therefore based on environmental, biological, and social factors as well. However, recent 2020 guidelines take these factors into consideration when treating and diagnosing obese individuals. When seeing obesity diagnoses in this new light, we recognize that obesity is a modifiable disease that is influenced by factors that can either improve or worsen outcomes. It has been established that with having a greater BMI, there is an increased risk of complications and death. However, the risk at any given BMI can be altered. For example, if someone smokes, consumes a poor diet, has reduced fitness, and greater visceral fat, then they will have higher risk than an average person at that given BMI. On the other hand, if someone has better fitness, follows a healthy diet, and has lower levels of visceral fat, then they have lower risk than an average person with the same BMI. For example, Research has found that physical fitness is a great predictor of health, regardless of obesity status. Let's break that down. It has been found that people who are physically fit and obese actually have less risk of complications and death than normal weighted people who are sedentary. Thus, it is true that the number on the scale is not the sole predictor of health outcomes. Diagnosis and treatment plans for obesity in Canada are now based on new criteria that physicians consider. In the past, clinicians would only assess BMI and waist circumference. However, they now look at biological factors such as genetics, hormone changes and associated chronic diseases, as well as social determinants such as cultural practices and beliefs, life and childhood experiences, psychological factors and medication. These new recommendations are based on understanding and taking a detailed historical exam to identify potential root causes and different barriers that may stunt positive progress. Obesity itself is initially not the problem. However, it is considered a chronic disease due to increased risk of development of other obesity-related conditions and complications. Some conditions that have been found to be linked to obesity are hypertension, which is high blood pressure, type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular disease, certain types of cancer, and osteoarthritis. 
Therefore, preventing the development of these conditions and preserving and improving quality of life are the main targets of obesity management and treatments. Beyond BMI and waist circumference, the Edmonton Obesity Staging System, or EOSS, is one of the tools utilized during clinical assessments for obesity. The EOSS is composed of stages 0 to 4, each stage measuring the severity of obesity-related risk factors, including the metabolic, physical, and mental implications. The EOSS allows healthcare providers to categorize patients with obesity into a stage depending on the health implications they may be experiencing. Stage 0 is when the patient demonstrates no obesity-related risk factors. This means that a stage 0 patient has normal blood pressure and fasting glucose and there is no impairment to their physical, metabolic, and mental well-being. Stage 1 is associated with mild obesity-related symptoms. This includes borderline hypertension, fatigue, body aches, and pain. Stage 2 is when the patient displays chronic obesity-related comorbidities. Some of these factors include hypertension, sleep apnea, type 2 diabetes, anxiety, and cystic ovary syndrome. Patients with stage 3 obesity manifest irreversible organ damage, also called end organ damage. This leads to heart failure, diabetic complications, and other significant consequences to their well-being. Lastly, stage 4 is associated with life-threatening or severe obesity-related comorbidities. This includes severe heart disease, severe diabetic complications, and other critical or end-stage obesity-related chronic conditions. New treatment plans for obesity consider root causes and are based on individualized long-term care plans. They provide nutritional, physical activity, and therapy plans based on the individual's current state, background, and contributors to their diagnosis. Plans may also include psychological, pharmacological, and or surgical interventions. It is now emphasized that healthcare providers should focus on realistic and practical goals that promote healthy living and positive changes for the individual's obesity management, while minimizing the stigma that surrounds obesity. Although there are improvements in treatment interventions for obesity management, there are some barriers patients might face. Social stigma around obesity may also deter individuals from seeking guidance from healthcare professionals due to the fear of being judged. There may also be a lack of general obesity programs or intervention-specific programs available close by, as well as limiting access to healthcare providers with obesity expertise or training. There also may be very long wait times for referrals and surgery, which is discouraging for many. Furthermore, some treatment plans are very high in cost and not affordable at all. Currently in Canada, none of the anti-obesity medications are covered by benefits or care programs, making it even less accessible for some individuals. Thanks for watching! If you enjoyed this topic, watch our YouTube short titled The Reality of Obesity, Obese Story, to follow Obi through his diagnosis of obesity. Don't forget to subscribe to the Demystifying Medicine McMaster YouTube channel for more videos like this.